All right, ladies and gents, welcome to the League Community Podcast. We got a special edition for you guys today. Uh, I think you know what it's going to be about. Uh, Aurelium Soul himself. So with me for that purpose today, we have Luke Reinard, uh, also known as Rabid Llama on the interwebs. Yep. Uh, he is the designer for Aurelium Soul and is going to be doing some PBE gameplay for us. So you guys will get to see some of that gameplay in action and ask some questions. Hey there, the kid yeah. with Braid. <laughs> uh, Luke, uh, why don't you say hi and uh, talk a little bit about what you do. Hi, yeah. Um, I'm a technical game designer here at Riot. Um, I was the champion designer working on Aurelian Soul for the last year. Um, and yeah, I'm really glad that he's finally out in the wild and people get to see him. Awesome. Cool. What's some of the other stuff you've done here at Riot? <laughs> um, yeah, I've been at Riot for a long time, uh, since since beta. So uh, yeah, I was the first build engineer, so I was the guy staying up till four in the morning making sure the servers came up. Uh, and then I moved to work on the patcher, and then I moved to work on as an engineer on the game, and then I eventually kind of weaseled my way into where I really wanted to be, which was game design. Because um, I, you know, really, it's super exciting. I'm super uh, stoked to be able to work on uh, a game like League. Yeah. So you've done you did uh you did Bard as well. Right? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That was the first part of my life story. I'm trying uh, to get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, so Bard is my first champion. Uh I came out uh, just about exactly a year ago actually. Uh and yeah, I'm super happy with where he's ended up recently. In fact, watching some of the uh Katowice, uh games this last weekend. Uh was super excited to see SKT picking him. Awesome, yeah. So you, uh, you at this point are kind of the uh, the, the the cosmic designer, dude. Uh, is that is that going to be a trend? <laughs> yeah, are, I, are, like I, Gypsy Lord's three hits. You're cosmic. Yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> like the I get the the cosmic unknowable like demigod. Uh, they sort of throw me those and say, here, figure out what to do with this. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's I think designers end up in sort of they have trends. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> that's one of the fun things here at Riot, I know, is that uh, you guys are encouraged to really just uh, express yourself individually. There's mm -hmm. not like, a, all right, this is going to have to be this way, designed within these limits. You guys really do have uh, a lot of wherewithal to make, uh, make cool shit happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we kind of just get uh, a champion idea, and sometimes it starts with something as simple as we're going to make a mage, we're going to make an assassin. In this case, it was we want to make a dragon, and it was sort of, you know, asterisk dragon with sort of kind of like this, but not like this, and not like that, but, um, and then we kind of just figure out how best to express that champion through gameplay, and sometimes it's, we have a cool gameplay idea, like, oh, what if you go back in time, and sometimes we have a cool, uh, like, thematic idea, like, uh, you know, what if it was, what if it was death, what, you know, can we mm -hmm. do, what can we do with the idea of the Grim Reaper that makes it cool in League, um, so yeah, the, the, Champion designer, uh, we, we call it the DNA, which is sort of a, a pithy name, but it's uh, the champion designer, the narrative designer, and the artist, uh, concept artist, um, really take a champion for the first, I would say, third to half of its lifetime. They take it from okay. barest ideas to, here's some awesome art for it. Oh, it's great. Let me write a story about that. Oh, cool. Well, here's a cool mechanic that we can use here and sort of work our way from... We have some vague idea of maybe this is a cool thing to actually having a character that's that's sort of living and breathing and in the game with some kind of temporary model and, and starting to get ideas of what the VO script looks like. And then um, the rest of the champion pod comes on, which is uh, animators and 3D artists and texture artists and uh, particle effects and sound. And you know everybody uh, comes in and starts really making the champion, like flushing it out, making it look great, making it work. Uh, engineers, uh, I don't know. I feel bad. I feel a little bad actually sitting here and being like, yeah, I, I made it really in soul. Because, uh, it's okay. Because I had this little part of it, and there's just so many people that, that are super talented, and I'm really happy to work with all of them, um, making him look and sound and act uh, just spectacular. Yeah, you're totally right. Shout out to the whole pod that was involved in uh, in uh, in working on this champion. Uh, I know I know we're all really excited to see him go out there. I hope all the, uh, the the people watching are as well. So let's uh, let's actually just. Uh, Let's let's get to it. You know, right. uh, they're here for this, and uh, and then that'll uh, facilitate us asking questions. So why don't you get started logging into PVE? Yeah. Uh, one question that popped up, obviously, yeah. uh, while uh, while you're doing that, and and one I know I'm deeply curious about as well is uh, what's with the name, man, Rabid Llama? Where'd that come from? Oh, uh, it's a name I've used online a long time, and I'm I'm not the only one for sure. Because every time I sign up for a new service, I have to tack more numbers onto the end of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it came from originally way, way back when, um, playing Tribes 2, which is, I think, probably dates me. Um, I was bad at the game, but I was just starting to get good at the game, so I named myself Rabid Newbie, because, you know, I'm still pretty new, but yeah, I'm a little dangerous. Um, and then I moved to Team Fortress Classic when that came out, and the the, the sort of parlance of, of TFC, llamas were 
people on your team who were just dead weight or idiots <laughs> or terrible. So I'm like, aha, I can translate rabbit baby to go. rabbit llama. Okay. Um, and then it just sort of stuck. And then it, it's sort of a funny, you know, it's a funny combination of words. And I'm, I don't know. It, I never had a good reason to change it. So that's a good one, man. You know, uh, when I've been doing headlines for for uh, a couple of really soul <laughs> things, I've been like, how to work rabid llama into this? Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those weird things because some some people like around the office kind of go by their online names. Like, you know, freak is freak. You say, hey, freak, how's it going? Um, so I've never really gotten into the habit of of being called rabid llama to my face. It's still kind of weird, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really cool to see my to see my name. In whatever form, like, on on a champion. Gotcha. Uh, hey, chat out there. I see that we're uh, we're basically missing a ton of your questions right now while we get this started. Uh, just definitely be cycling those back in. I already see a couple that uh, that that uh, we want to be hitting, but we're gonna try and get this game kicked off first. Uh, so if uh, if any of you guys have PBE accounts out there, we're gonna create a game right now, uh, and uh, and we're we're seeking IGNs for some invites. Uh, other than that, we'll just be kicking it off with. Uh, with the uh, the PBE testers that are already out there, so uh, drop your names in chat at League Community if you've got a if you've got a PBE account, uh, and we'll get you in there. First five, obviously, or first four, maybe, maybe nine if we can if we can hack it. We'll see. All right, I'm just gonna name the room Twitch.tv/slash League Community. I sure, guess. that works great. <laughs> um, and yeah, so the name is Twitch.tv/slash League Community. If you see that, feel free to just hop into it. Okay, rooms up. Okay. Um, I'm seeing a bunch of you already in there. Wait, huh? Yeah, or uh, sorry, a bunch of a bunch of people in chat already have league accounts or PB accounts. I mean, cool. Okay, so uh, Zolbrak one two one. I would say just hold that until we get everybody in the room because mm -hmm. you're gonna have to say it again anyway. Oh, okay, Zolbrak's already in there. If you guys see the room, just hop right in, obviously, uh, because we might not get a, a invites out to everybody. Good to hear, cool. Zolbrak. He said in chat, yeah, digging thanks. the league community. <laughs> or, uh, not the league community, the champ already. <laughs> yeah, thanks right. a lot. Um, go. I guess I should say before this starts that this will not be a pro tips on how to play Aurelian Soul. I'm not... <laughs> Super great at League of Legends. Uh, so <laughs> I uh, don't take this as a, a measure of strength or weakness. I think he's, I don't know. I was watching Wings of Death stream just now, and he was kind of obliterating people. So uh, yeah, uh, this is more of a chance for me to talk about the champion sort of while we're looking at it live um, and hopefully not losing too bad. Um, cool. All right, the room's full. So all right, get, oh, uh, well, yeah, right. yeah. Sorry about that, folks. We will. Uh, <laughs> we're just gonna kick it off with this. We're gonna do another one afterwards. So, like I said, uh, it's probably just actually gonna be better. I didn't realize we'd have so many people on. Just hop right in. We'll give you guys the name of the of the game early so that you guys can get first access, uh, and then we'll tell you when it pops up, and you can just search for it. Uh, so we will be back with that after this one. Cool. Give them a chance to read my chat messages. Okay. Perfect. Uh, awesome. Everybody's on board. Cool. Okay. Our nightmare scenario, of course, was like, what if what if people won't let us play Aurelian really Soul? Yes. <laughs> that would not be great. Okay, let's kick it off to the sweet sound of war songs. Cool. By the way, folks, uh, for everybody tuning in, uh, as I mentioned, I am Adil Most Dirty. This Got is the League Community Podcast with a special PBE Day uh, uh, edition for Aurelian Soul. Uh, so we can check out his gameplay, his visuals, all that good stuff. Uh, and yeah, we've got the designer, Rabid Llama, Luke Reinhardt, here yep. to play him for you. Uh, is is the is the sound is his uh is his pick me not not enabled yet? Oh, maybe not. Oh, we're, it's really I'm so good. sad. It's real good. I'm so sad. You guys are gonna enjoy that when yeah, you see not, it. Not gonna try and spoil <laughs> it. Um, yeah, I'm I'm super super happy with how the VO turned out. The voice actor did an amazing job. Thirty one minutes of VO. If you guys haven't seen that, go check <laughs> out the uh, the YouTube vid of it. It's pretty awesome. There's some shade thrown Tarek's way. I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I don't think teleport ghost is the right answer. Um, Playdesk guys have said that. Uh, I'm gonna go, go a little bit uh, conservative here. Uh, play this guy's has said that Ghost is actually surprisingly good on this guy because he wants to sort of I can see it. run faster than you and stay in the fight as opposed to just flashing out. I'm picking flash because I'm probably gonna miss position really badly and then have to go over a wall. Uh, uh yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, taking a mid, that's sort of where we, you know, whenever we design a champion, we kind of have a role in mind from a place they go, but. Um, we're never too upset when they find out, like, oh, this character is actually really good in support or really good in the in jungle or top. Uh, as long as it sort of doesn't distort their play, like, oh, sure. you just like 
Like, I think uh, AP Rexi was one of those times where it's like, oh, you just cast her Q over and over again, and that's the whole gameplay pattern when you take her, uh, like, top AP. That we weren't too happy about, but in general, when it's like, oh, like, Tom Kench can go two places, it's that's super cool. Um, but I will play him mid because that is ostensibly where he goes. Perfect. So I, I'm seeing a repeat question that I know uh, that I want to hear as well. I think I, I think I might have heard the story behind this, but what is the boop in the VO for, man? <laughs> and there's like eight different versions of the boop. Yeah. Tell, 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 tell the people. I mean, I'm, I kind of don't. I kind of don't want to. So oh. it, it's it's not hooked up yet. Uh, I didn't know that it was going to be the first thing in the VO script when it went up. Uh, so that sort of puts it way out in front. I was hoping it would be towards the back. It's a little bit of an Easter egg, but, um, well, you know, okay. So what it's supposed to be is that sometimes when you whack somebody up the side of the star, every so often he's supposed to go boop. <laughs> okay, with maximum gravity too, just yeah. boop. <laughs> well... <laughs> All right, there you have it, folks. Yeah, I, Every now and then, when you whap someone upside the head, boop. Yep. We need to. I think it's. I think it didn't quite get hooked up right for PVE, so it'll gotcha. it'll be in probably tomorrow. That's that's what I'm gonna do after the stream is make sure that's in. Gotcha. Are we kicking off? What's going on here? Is the game <laughs> not starting? Yeah, I think PVE when we release a new character, it just gets kind of overstressed. Give, a, um, give, uh, yeah, have, give have some give patience, folks. Yeah, PVE is spiking right now. Obviously, the new patch dropped, so uh, uh, everybody's on there testing. Yeah, poor the poor PVE sits at like. 100 people for a long time and then something big comes out and it's just like, oh no, please. Do you mind dropping that in chat actually? Some of the oh. uh, some of the uh. players seem concerned. <laughs> uh. Yep, you guys got it. All the boops. Yeah. Let the memes begin. <laughs> so Luke, while we're waiting, let's uh let's take a uh let's take a new question. Uh so uh wildlife killer, just what what is wrong with you first of all with that name? Me Meanie. Um <laughs> got, got to kill the uh, we actually threw up a forum post uh I think a couple weeks ago uh mm. regarding uh regarding Aushin uh and and uh, how that had kind of long term over many leaps and bounds kind of transitioned uh into into us working on Royal and Soul. So I can't speak perfectly to it, but I would say go check that out. Uh it should be sticking up on the the North American boards. Ah, uh, the game failed. Ah, uh, great. Okay. Well, I guess uh, we're restarting, folks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully, those please work. Can... Uh, I'll make a new one. All right. So, uh, I guess I guess you guys get another chance to jump in if you failed already. <laughs> it's the same name: Twitch uh, Twitch TV slash Link Community. Some guy out there is gonna have his heart crushed. Yeah. He's so sad right now. <laughs> Here, let's make this a little easier. If not, I'm kidding. <laughs> Gonna make sure uh, we'll, get, we'll give them one intermediate and then like three beginner bots, you know, just to make it make it work. Yep. Can he jungle um, while we're getting started? Uh, yeah. So that's an interesting question. Uh, the answer was no, of course not. Until <laughs> a couple of days ago, when they started sort of poking at it, and the answer is maybe now. Um, I'm just gonna start and then try ahead, and snipe yeah. the character. And hope yeah, you're fine. What's going on? You're fine. Sweet. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Sorry to those people there, that were there in the were, first game. There were. Is, is your runes page named Dargan? Dagrin? That's <laughs> yes. great. Oh, what boo! Are... Just do it again. Oh no, no. Okay. Well, <laughs> here's, here's your chance. There you go. There's one. There's okay. one spot, folks. One spot. <laughs> oh god, I gosh, I have gotta have a better. The rose, man. The rose is the only summoner icon. Look at look at this guy with a uh, a very special icon compared to everybody else. Okay, let's kick it off. Cool. All right. Come you'll, on. You'll get, get it. it. Oh yeah. Okay. I believe. I awesome. believe. Um. Oh. Anyway. So yeah, you were asking about the the forum post about uh, Aushin and kind of what happened to that. Uh. So. When I came on the the, the Dragon project, it, that decision had kind of already been made. Um, but I can sort of give my my impression of, of what was going on there, which is that uh, the first off, we made the forum post because we didn't we were afraid that if we were just like here's really in Soul, everyone would just be really confused and like well you know what why happened to why does he also start with AS? <laughs> yeah, um, which was actually, that was actually an intentional thing. I, I thought it was I thought it was uh, an accident. I asked the narrative guy, and he's like, no, that was that I did on purpose. Yeah, um, that's that seemed pretty intentional to me. Yeah, I mean, which is a pretty big like, no, like for real, this is this is the new the new dragon character. This is what Aushin sort of metamorphed into. Sure. Um, but yeah, so the the Aushin project was going on for a long time. Like I forget when we actually released the little teaser, but it was it was years ago. Uh, so the project had sort of 
uh, gone through a number of people's hands, and he'd had some kits, but they weren't ever quite where they wanted wanted them to be. And uh, really, the the people that had originally had vision for the character that were like, "Oh, we know, we know what this this Aushin is supposed to look like and what it's supposed to be," just weren't had cycled out. They weren't on the project. They were on other projects. They were on other teams. Um, so when it came to us, we're like, "Well, okay." We could just cancel the thing. Like, okay, the people that had the idea originally, the, had the passion, aren't here. Like, oh, we could just just can the whole thing. But that's that's not. But we thought there's still something cool here. There's still sure. a dragon that we haven't done in League of Legends. Uh, so we sort of started out. The, the team when I came on was the objective was, uh, hey, there's a there's a cool dragon. There's a cool kind of dragon we don't have in the game. We have the sort of like beast teeth and claws and fire kind of dragon but we don't have the sort of i mean i guess more eastern inspired the 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 magical dragon the the high intelligence um wielder of, of ancient magics kind of dragon um and we thought there was a great opportunity there to make one of those that was really cool oh yes pray pray to the pbe gods um we thought that there was an opportunity there to make something really cool that would be really unique to league that would be totally like the league of legends dragon like that um so we that's what that's, that's sort of where aushin went we're like okay we'll forget everything except kind of the body type the like long the serpentine dragon and sort of some of the ideas about uh magical power and wisdom and and refined aura um and go from there and we went through a lot of different ideas we sort of there were pitches for a sort of uh shadow of the colossus like stone mossy dragon um, and, um, what else was there? Like, er, like earth and vines dragon. And th there were I, things I that you, didn't... I think you had said there were a whole basket of dragons when we were talking. Yeah, and <laughs> even, even like broader before that, there was concept art for every kind of dragon you could ever imagine. And sure. we sort of hit on the space dragon as this really like, oh, wow, that's, that's not only different that we haven't seen that before, but it's also, um, like that's a, a source of power that's really out there. It's really amazing. Man, PBE does not want to cooperate. Um, it's okay. I'll keep talking. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Folks, by the way, uh, if PBE is just not cooperating, we're going to be here the whole time, still answering questions, and everything. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we can uh, we can maybe look at some 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 uh, Aurelian Soul art or something like that. <laughs> Hopefully, we get the game off. and We're going to keep trying, obviously. But even if it doesn't, hang around. Uh, we're going to be answering questions. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Ah! Okay. Uh, Wait, well, do we have the sweet PBE uh, loading? Or we do not. We do not. Uh, that did though. That did ship. So yes. thanks. Thanks, Moobeat, for finding that one. If yeah, you, so if you... <laughs> go ahead, you can tell the story. Oh, yeah, if you know where... So, um, as sort of a rite of passage, every every new champion, when they get to the point where where it is... Uh, where... Uh, what's his name? Feral Pony. Or where Riot Feral Pony deems them uh, worthy of it, they get a splash screen art that is uh, drawn in MS Paint in, in a Picasso-esque fashion. It is, it is simply... Um, some would, would call Feral Pony the, the Picasso of load screen arts. I would call Picasso the Brian Feeney of painting. Um, so he had one for a long time. Uh, in fact, up until a couple days ago. And then he got the real load screen art. But we kind of forgot to take the other one out of the files. So it's up on Twitter somewhere. Uh, I don't know if you can find a link and drop it in the chat, but uh, it's pretty great. Uh, I think I think it says something to the, to the uh, effect of F delays, I'm a Dargon. Uh, but yeah, what was I, what was I talking about? Uh, we were talking about a bunch of stuff. Um, oh yeah. One one moment, folks. By the way, uh, we are having a slight technical issue uh, with the uh, the uh, uh, Luke, Luke's screen not showing up uh, oh. with the gameplay. We're gonna work on that real quick. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. I will stare blankly into a camera. Uh, in here, uh, uh, helping us is our wonderful, wonderful IT gentleman, Donald. There's people he's, with cords. He's working on the issue, so you're going to see him in the background, folks. Okay. Uh, I think we're almost in game, so that's good. Yeah, perfect. Just it, It'll be going on. We'll hop in as we can. Can we switch to see if we're... Um, actually, smaller than Pot Zip, I'm actually not quite sure what the best mastery to run this guy is. If Thunderlord seems obvious because he has so much damage over time that having the spike of... Um, excuse me. Having the spike of damage that Thunderlords offers is really helpful. Um, the... Uh -oh. I just meet you? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, Deathfire Touch. Or, yeah, Deathfire Touch is sort of an obvious one because he does a lot of damage over time. Um, I think probably not as good because he can't sort of choose. He can't 
constantly poke you with it. He has to commit a little bit more to do it. Um, Storm Raider's Surge actually has seen some popularity in the last couple of days, and people realize that once you get to the point where you can do some really, like, chunk damage to people, he get the extra move speed super helpful for him to reposition in a fight and keep himself safe. And uh, for a while, I was running Strength of Ages because this guy, having more health, on, this guy doesn't have any um, active defenses, uh, meaning he doesn't have any shields, doesn't have any, he doesn't have like a Vladimir pool. Um, so if he gets close to the wrong character on the enemy team, he can be in serious trouble and lacking any way of immediately responding to it, just having more health can be really helpful. Um, so we're still... I'm still close. Yeah! Okay, cool. Took a couple of chances. Go ahead with your game. Uh, cool. We're gonna keep working on the tech issue, and uh, we'll right. be showing the footage as soon as possible. Everybody. Okay, I'll just I'll just narrate about Dorn's Ring, Two Biscuits, and Yellow Trinket. Um, so... I guess one... So when we're, since we're in the business of pro tips, um, I would definitely say... Oh, we have a disconnect. Well, hopefully they'll show up. Um, uh, definitely rank W uh, first, uh, both at level one and ra like rank it up uh, as your first choice, um, which is a little bit. Uh, normally, we try and make Q spells the spell you rank up because it's just sort of like the obvious thing. A lot of people are like Q does damage, cool. Um, but in this case, uh, I don't know. Oh geez, I'm against the Zed. So, uh, segueing from that, uh, Aurelian Soul is. A, his strength is that if he can position somewhere in a fight and survive, he can zone out the whole fight. His stars are very scary, very damaging. Characters like 80 carries and supports and mid-range mages have a really hard time because they have to stand at they have to stand at like this uh, his outer orbit range to do anything. Um, the all right, sorry to interrupt, folks. Hey, so everybody watching on the stream at home, hi, my name is Andy Belford. I'm the uh, player relations manager here uh, at Riot Games. Uh, I'm very sorry we're having some technical difficulties right now, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to have Llama log out of the game over there, and he's going to move over here to my seat, and oh, he's going to play on this PC. So if you can okay. go ahead and just quit out of the client real quick for me, Llama. Yep, tell just tell him you'll be right back. Yay, reconnect. So... It is uh, it's one of those cases where we tested everything about 50 million different times before we went live. <laughs> unfortunately, guys, so we're gonna be yep. uh, we're gonna be fixing it for you real fast here. So, okay, let's see here. Let Give me... us okay. just a moment, please. Great. All right, there we go. We're logged out of that one, and we're gonna pull up PBE over here, which I believe we patched up earlier. Yeah, we um, were just looking. He was just spectating. So. Hey, it's fun. We're doing it live, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much for your patience. How's everybody doing out there in chat land right now? Good? <laughs> All right. Let's get this over on the other screen. Yes. That sounds yes, good. There we go. All right. We got some images here. That we're going to pull those down. And we're patching really quickly on this. Uh, so in the meantime, we well, got some... We got. <laughs> that's right. Evan, we're doing it live. That's right, sir, Hardcore. <laughs> we're doing it live. That's okay. We're good. They thank you so much for being patient. This is why the League of Legends community is the best community in the world. You guys are awesome. Brennicus, how are you, Andy? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. That's true. Overlay, I'm NA. What? NA the best. <laughs> EU's awesome too. Alrighty, so we're getting all set up over there. We got some questions. It'd be nice if there's an official PBE patch note spreadsheet or something. That's a good good suggestion, Doc Ultima. I'll be sure to pass that along. Best community. All right, let's see here. Also, the saltiest community. Ah, uh, I, I don't know. We have the I don't. Community I wouldn't either. say we have the saltiest community at all. I would say we have uh, we have folks who are passionate about the game, right? I think I think both by measure of average saltiness and peak saltiness, we do not have the saltiest community. No, no. I think we have an amazingly creative community and a very fun one. All right, so uh, I'm going to let you go ahead and log in over here. Um, here you go. So log in there, and then Dylan will switch it over to the proper screen. Okay. All right. Okay. We are back. So, folks, this is going to be a tad bit interesting, <laughs> mostly because uh, the uh. XSplit is, of course, running on the other computer. So I'm going to have an issue with uh, being able to see what's actually happening in real time. Uh, but we're going to do our best. And on the bright side, you will very shortly have Aurelian Soul gameplay on your screen. Okay, I'm reconnecting. Cool. doop -a doop 
<laughs> Look at Doing that. It live, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Should we move these? Oh, that's right. Minimap. Cool. Okay, now let's see how mad the people in the game are at me. Okay, folks. <laughs> all right, so pretty much all I have on my screen that actually is uh, is current is going to be the Twitch chat. So I'm just going to be focusing on that. I apologize if I'm looking over my shoulder a lot. I'm going to be checking out what Luke is doing. <laughs> I guess I could have skipped the I'm not very good at League part of the thing because it's like, oh, no, I'm, I'm three levels behind. Clearly, <laughs> clearly that's the reason. You have an excuse now. Yeah. Oh, but as I was saying, um, uh, probably long-windedly, uh, one of the hard counters to, to Aurelian Soul in my eyes is Assassin's because he sure. has a lot of damage presence in his stars, but he can't do anything at all to things within 300 range of him, like really cl close to him. Gotcha. Um, so he can push land really hard, he can zone people out, but as soon as uh, an Assassin decides to sort of all in on him, uh, he has a lot of problems. Um, yeah, you're gonna have an interesting time, obviously, uh, what, with, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think I have until he hits six, and then I'm pretty much... You're gonna have a bad uh, time? Yeah, most of the words I'd use to describe that probably shouldn't be said on stream. Uh, so I'm seeing, a, I'm seeing a lot of people asking about, uh, size issues, you know, and there's a lot of opinions, like, people saying, Oh, this is too small, this is too big, or why is this so big, so small, and things yeah. like that. I know you had talked a bit about the challenges inherent in creating a dragon champion yeah. uh, in League of Legends, and how that works for size. Can you talk a little bit about the history there? Yeah, so, uh, we knew we wanted to make a serpentine dragon, and for a long time we sort of focused on that, like, oh, he needs to be, like, uh... You know, how are we going to do this this long tail? And actually, for a while, um, Ao Shin had an in-game model. It was rough, and it had, like, you know, flat textures on it, but it was it was an in-game model, and the problem with it was that uh, he fit... To fit him in a usual, like, character hitbox, he had to be, like, really, really thin, right? Because for him to be, you know, like, yay, yay big, he had to be just pencil thin, and it looked really dumb. And we decided really early on that, hey, if we're going to do a, this kind of champion justice, we have to do something about that. Um, and actually, the first sort of iterations on, on the kit were very much focused on that. And we had a lot of iterations of the kit where he was, he had this sort of train of you know, very, very prototype stuff. He had like this train of, of minions following him around. Um, and it looked completely ridiculous. Um, and it made him, it made him, you know, actually like legit long. Um, and the problem with that was we couldn't find any gameplay that we particularly- Oh, jeez. Ah, smart cast! Oh, dear. Well, there don't seem to have any problems finding the hitbox on this model. Haha, <laughs> -ha, barrier. Um... The barrier heavy portfolio pays off for the- I don't know. Um... First off, pause everything. What the heck? Not that one, and not that one. Okay. Um, so yeah, so, uh, we tried having his body be like, oh yeah, for gameplay reasons, it is enormous, you know, it's like half a screen long, and the gameplay just really didn't, didn't, we didn't find anything we really liked there, um, in large part because that meant he had to be a tank. He had to be a tank character whose objective was to stand around in a fight and impede the enemy, because if he wasn't a tank, then he just died, he couldn't, like, wind his body in where it needed to go and actually accomplish anything. Um, so we kind of put that on ice. And then there were a lot of other sort of like, how do we make this not look like he's a giant like chain of sausage links? And the answer was, we're not quite sure. Um, so um, being Riot, we could have figured it out eventually, but we sort of decided, okay, hold up. Let's, let's see if there's anything else out there that might work. And we found pretty quickly that, hey, if we just made his tail sort of not part of his hitbox and stick out the back, and then not really have, uh, and then have his hitbox be the front of him. Yeah, this this sort of solves the problem, and it takes a little bit of getting used to. I think I think I'm so used to seeing it that I don't even notice it. But um, uh, yeah, I think it definitely. Oh, this is not safe. Okay. Um, it, I think it works out, and it lets us do. Uh, it makes his tail this really beautiful. Uh, oh, jeez. Whoop. It lets us make his tail this really beautiful. Uh, uh, Having a bad time, I see. Yeah, well, <laughs> I got ganked by two people. Um, also, funny enough, I've never played Aurelian Soul versus another Aurelian Soul before. That's like completely slipped my mind to ever try it because we always have play tests are always sort of, oh, we're gonna test Aurelian Soul versus a, a regular mid laner and see how that goes and sort of do balance changes and never really consider. <laughs> it just sort of slips through the cracks to test him against himself. 
Um, have, have you shown the folks at, uh, at home the uh, the recall animation yet? Uh, or, have you, or have you just died all the time? Uh, well, I did it once, but it wasn't on the screen. Okay. Um, all right. Let's, let's, let's yeah, show I'll, I'll do that real quick. Okay. Um, People, we got the recall animation. Yeah, so he sort wow. of crushes a star, and then he opens this, this like, singularity and boom. I have not seen base. that. Yeah, uh, it's pretty rad. Folks, apologies for all the shoulder looking, like I mentioned, because we had to switch <laughs> computers. I can't actually see the game anymore, so um, uh, so I'm, I'm going to be paying attention to chat mostly, but, yeah, but checking out over there. I got I to gotta know when to make fun of Luke, obviously. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um... So yeah. yeah, hey, I saw somebody in chat by the way say that it was uh, it was really cool to to see a champion being born like this, and and we're so excited to be able to bring this kind of stuff to you guys. Yeah. Um, we uh, we obviously run weekly uh, podcasts on or sorry podcasts live streams. We do podcasts too. Check them out. Uh, live streams uh, for the league community live stream, uh, introducing you guys to riders around the company. Uh, I'm a Dillamos dirty. You saw saw as Will earlier. Uh, we are also going to be trying to bring you guys uh, these special treats for big things hitting PvE. Obviously, the number one thing is champions, but you know maybe uh, to some extent for like cool skins that are coming out and stuff like that. So uh, make sure to uh, to follow us so that you guys get notifications for uh, when the stream is going off. So go ahead, Luke. How's it going? <laughs> no, it's, it's going okay, okay, as long as they don't gank me and Zed doesn't interact with me at all. Um, yeah, at this point, I'm actually looking for. Oh, that's, that's, nope. Help. Got somebody asking, are the orbs hidden when you're in a bush? I would assume so, but at the same uh, time they do damage. So no, I don't know. actually, yeah, so the, the, the reasoning there is that um, they're missiles, they do damage, and you know, if you shoot Mystic Shot out of a bush, it shows up. Okay. Um, so they actually don't, they're totally visible. They're, they're visible as their own things. So they're visible, if they, if they sneak over a wall, they're visible. Um, okay. If, they're, if you're in a bush, they're visible. You're not visible, you're still in the bush, they can't, you know, click on you to, to <laughs> auto-attack you. But there's, you. there's a slight giveaway there. Yeah, and I'll see, I'll see if I can't find a... a enemy Aurelian souls sticking into a bush somewhere. So we decided early on that that was like an okay thing for this character. He's not sneaky. Uh, this character is very much about being large and boisterous and, mm -hmm. and bringing the, the stars crashing down on people. So, um, oh, actually, speaking of which... Eh, no gotcha. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that that's the sort of reasoning there. It's definitely a big change. It I haven't seen it borne out in playtest as being a huge deal as much as I thought it would. I thought it would be a really big, like, you know, oh man, I can't hide in bushes, what am I going to do? Um, we sort of decided to instead give him uh, a lot of mobility. So it's like, yeah, you can't hide in a bush, but you can show up somewhere in an unexpected manner and, and accomplish stuff. You know, you don't hide, you're just really uh, mobile. Speaking of which, nice. Hey, side trick. I, I know you can see Cho you can't see uh, Cho'Gath in a bush, but uh, I mean, Aurelian Aurelian's pretty big, man. Check out that splash. <laughs> if you look really closely, I think you can see humans, very tiny ones, down at the bottom right. Yes. <laughs> what's what's your KDA? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing a lot of comments about feeding. I mean, oh, I am I am totally feeding. Oh, it's 0 and two, folks. That's not too bad. Maybe about to be 0 and three. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, well, one and three. Infinitely better than, than one and three. <laughs> yes. So I'm seeing in the fight there, uh, we've got that, that orb gameplay going on, which is really kind of the, the unique... I mean, there are many unique things about him, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'd heard you talk a little bit about how there's this fun thing going on where just by being there in the fight, even without necessarily specifically casting things on people, you have a lot of presence. Uh, and you can even sometimes just be picking up kills, like not even realizing you've, you've done so. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, something interesting this guy, this guy does is because his stars are his main source of... of damage, at least, you know, over over the course of a fight, um, most other characters have to pick a target and have to use their spells to fight that target. This guy can, Aurelian can, um, sort of, he can be focused on one character, but he can also be forcing other characters to, um, no, I missed him, uh, can be forcing other characters to, um, back off or even, like, in, get, in, get in closer than they want to. Um, just by virtue of, of being in the fight and, and having his stars out. So, um, I actually want to try and stay a little bit away from this guy so I can build up my flight on E. Um, and then maybe ambush somebody like here. So I'm going to oh, use baby. my EQ combo to EQ really big. And then hit dudes. Alright. Here we go. Oh, 
Nice. Hey, diver down below. He's just trying to make uh, the other Aurelian soul uh, look good, you know? <laughs> he's, he's doing his best. Yeah, it's all, it's all about being player focused. And I got have him make sure he has a good game. Oh, geez. Yeah. Uh, folks, this uh, this with me is Luke Reinard, uh, Rabid Llama, the designer, uh, the gameplay designer on Aurelian Soul. Obviously, a ton of people put in work to create champions. Uh, uh, here on League of Legends. Uh, Luke happens to be the guy who took lead on the gameplay. Um, Luke, I'm seeing a lot of item build questions. Specifically, people are being like, Rylize Leandries, Rylize Leandries. Uh, yeah. is, that, is, that, is that really where you're going with him? Like, I'm not saying you in this case, but like, uh, what, what's, what's the build situation? Yeah, definitely. This, uh, so, like, it sort of says here, um, we found that he needs a mana item and he needs some sort of ability early, so we tend to go Rod of Ages um, um, pretty early on. Okay. But Rylize is definitely the point where this character sort of turns on. Wow, I've had potions and not used them the entire game. I'm sure chat's really mad at me about that. No, um, they're, they're mad at you for not using your Q to stun uh, to save your allies. Oh, good point. <laughs> um, Chat, please teach us more. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so then, but Rylize is definitely this guy turns on because his his stars actually apply the weakest possible Rylize. They apply the 20% gotcha. for a second, um, but even that just reapplied over and over again means that you have a speed differential over those guys and they can't run away from you and you can sort of keep your distance from them. Um, I'm gonna rank up E. Uh, got an interesting question here from, uh, or not, not even, I mean, yeah, it's a question from uh, the up? great Randall Sama. <laughs> Boosh. Um, about just why does he feel so slow? If, if I had to guess, Luke, I know you got a crazy fight going on. Wait a second. Aha. Well, I tried. Um. Why does he feel so slow? I, I mean, I, so... I, I was gonna say, I imagine some of that is probably just the fact that he's so big. You know, to an extent, he still has to have the same move speed, so he'll seem slower even though he moves the same speed as everybody else. Yeah, but it's actually true that he has he has the lowest uh, lowest base move... Well, he's tied for the lowest base move speed in the game. Like, wow. Anivia has... It's 325 um, movement speed, which is the same as Anivia, same as a lot of sort of really immobile characters. And, and the reason for that is, um, especially early on in lane, if he's meaningfully faster than than his opponent yeah it goes the, bad it goes bad for them yeah the star <laughs> game play just really breaks down they can't really juke inside of it nearly as easily now to sort of make up for that um his e his e passive which uh, is always available even when the spells on cooldown um lets him move quickly in a straight line um which sort of lets him move around and then it falls off in combat if he takes damage uh from a champion or a tower it he just loses the whole passive and has to build it back up again um also if he turns around he loses it um, like right there, I just went back to 350, which is my gotcha. uh, current base That's interesting. Speed. That's totally um, new gameplay. We haven't really seen anything like that in League. Yeah, so I was happy that we found a way to sort of let him still feel fast, like a dragon that this kind of should, um, even passively. Oop. Oop. Um, is that in the bush? I don't think it's in the bush. Oh. <laughs> um, and so we found a way to have him feel fast without feeling like he was completely unreasonable uh, early in lane. Um, I think he, he still might be entirely unreasonable, by the way, so like we're definitely paying close attention to balance stuff on PvE, but um, as much as we can, because PvE is always sort of, it's, it's all custom games, so it can be tricky to get really great balance feedback, but... Luke, Luke I hate to break it to you, but uh, Twitch chat is losing its mind over your, uh, your CS. <laughs> How it's awful. I was hey, DC'd for hey, the first 10 minutes of the hey game. Hey folks, you may not have been here, but we had a technical issue. He had to switch computers halfway yeah. through. Usually I'm on that computer, which is why I can't see what's going on on the game. Uh, so give him a break, will ya? <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll let this fight wrap up, and then I got another question that a lot of people have been asking. Oh. Ah. Who made that spell? Um. <laughs> so uh, speaking of that, um, and this is this is one that uh, that has intrigued me a little bit. People are essentially asking, uh, you know, hey, the the ultimate feels a little kind of <laughs> not ultimately, mm -hmm. I guess, compared to the rest of his kit. Um, I, I know I have a theory on that, but I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, um, it's actually, I think it's actually a fair criticism. Uh, the uh, let's see what I want. Yeah, sure, whatever. Um, it's actually a fair criticism. The ult was the thing that came last in the kit. Uh, we had the we found the sort of orbiting stars gameplay and. Um, had been testing it and found that it was actually fun by itself. Like with the, uh, there was a version of this kit. I mean, obviously not a version we were thinking of shipping, but there was a version of the kit where the only spell he had was you have stars, they go in and out, uh, and that was at least as far as like the first six levels of, of laning gameplay, fun. 
it, which was really promising that we found something that was, you know, actually really engaging. And I always wanted to have one more, you know, oh, one more time. Let's start start it over again one more time. I can it, I can do better this time. Um, so because of that, we really wanted to make sure that we put a lot of power into these stars, uh, the star gameplay. Sure. Um, but because of that, and then we had these spells that needed to support it, like the Q really supports being able to move around and being able to sort of keep people at the right range. The the E, um, now the E is more of a utility thing. Um, but because of that, we, we didn't want to, but I totally, I spent a long time trying to find an ultimate that felt appropriately ultimate for a star dragon, right? He should, he should like pull the sun out of the sky and, and destroy the entirety of Summoner's Rift. And, but, um, because that's sort of the scale he's at, right? You've seen his, uh, you've seen his splash art, right? He's supposed to be that big. And if you saw the, the, uh, CG teaser we put out, he's even bigger than that, right? He takes up the whole sky. Um, but, uh, sort of being realistic, characters in League have power budgets, right? This guy, as someone so eloquently put it, has to be taken out by a squirrel with a blowgun sometimes. <laughs> um, so in sort of finding where to put the power, I wanted to focus on the star gameplay, the sort of moment to moment, the thing you have from level one all the way to level 18, as opposed to putting a lot of power in the R. Now that said, there actually is, there is a way, um, and I'm not sure if chat's upset at me at this, but there is a way to do, um, very powerful, uh, big, flashy ultimates, and we're losing while I'm talking. Um, there is a way to do big, flashy ultimates um, without making them powerful, and that's to make them complicated. Gotcha. Right? I think Nunu ult is an example of this, where, like, you know, it's powerful, but it's so conditional, right? He has to do, oh, geez. He has to do all that. He has to find somewhere to stand and stand there and have enough enemies be nearby and channel the whole time, and then it blows up and it's powerful. Um, so we tried some ultimates that were like that, that were either really strategically impactful, you know, applied stuff to the whole map, or like, he'd like summon a star and it would blow up eventually and he had to get close to it and hit it with his stars, charge it up, and um, it just made the character really hard to play. Sure. Um, and if you were behind, like I am now, um, the ultimate I have now, I can still press the R button and have an impact in the fight and knock people around and um, set them up for my team to be successful. Gotcha. Um, but like, if it's a big, like, crazy new new alt thing um i frequently just wouldn't be able to do it at all okay so that so that that sounds so I, i'm hearing kind of two different threads here one is is that you know just to an extent in general like power budgets on champions are going to be shifted around in some cases it's going to be a little heavier in the ult in some cases more in the basic abilities and then the other case is that uh for him the fact that he's so about being in your face means that you really need the ultimate to help make sure he can always do, be doing something yeah that too like ha having him have some really given that he had for his uh, star gameplay, he has to be able to stand near the enemy for an extended period of time and hit them with multiple of these. Um, meant that he didn't have a lot of really reliable output for his team. There were there were play tests where he, Aurelian Soul, just didn't do anything because he got behind, like I am now, and he just couldn't live long enough to impact enemy teams. So Luke. having a spell that was, uh, uh, having a spell that was like press button get output definitely help your team was was really really helped that gotcha luke i'm gonna need you to do two things for me all right can oh, you hold please. the control button okay we'll let you finish this fight first <laughs> oh there yeah. you go yeah yep, yeah, yep. yeah you picked yeah. it up thanks chat chat is losing its mind right now <laughs> <laughs> wow i had four levels ahead this man <laughs> sorry you guys try you Folks. guys try narrating this is Rapid Llama, uh, Luke Reinhardt. He's the man who designed the gameplay on uh, on Aurelian Soul. <laughs> oh, it's going poorly. Oh, man. Also, folks, like I said, sorry about the stomp. Uh, Luke, unfortunately, <laughs> we uh, uh, has had to switch computers because we had some technical issues earlier on. Uh, we are also going to have Luke. Uh, Luke, do you mind turning down your uh, your in-game uh, SFX a little bit? Yeah. Just hop in and just the SFX. Oh, okay. Just cut it in half. Call it. Okay. Cool. Perfect. There we go. All right, folks. Uh, so once again, uh, while this is wrapping up, there's not a ton going on. Uh, this is the League Community live stream. I am a Dylan Most oh, yeah. Dirty, uh, member of the NA Player Relations team. Uh, we are doing these actually weekly on Wednesdays. Uh, we've also got Scarzar jumping in on Thursdays with uh, various designers. Uh, and then we've got a special treat for you today, which is Luke Reinhardt, the uh, designer on Aurelian Soul. Uh, also known as Rabid Llama Online, yep. who is here to showcase some gameplay for you guys on, on uh, Aurelian Souls PvE ship date. So I don't know if you guys saw that sick flash ult that I did, but it was sick. See? The ult can be powerful, <laughs> folks. <laughs> 
Uh, and apologies again for the technical issues. Uh, I, uh, I'm usually on that computer. Uh, unfortunately, we, uh, we weren't uh, picking up the capture. So we're wrapping this game up, and we're going to have another few folks that will hopefully be a little more even, and maybe uh, Luke will remember to level up his abilities. <laughs> <laughs> no, unlikely. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this game's not quite over yet. It's a comeback. It's still folks. in. It's a comeback. Look, I can get some CS here. I'm going to break 80 CS this game. It's a new record. Actually, CSing on this guy, as much as I am just failing at CSing because I'm bad, uh, CSing on this guy is actually really different and interesting because he has to sort of weave auto attacks with the stars and when they're and he can't afford to keep them out all the time um i can't hear because i'm at base but um so learning sort of how to chain your star hits but also um auto attack and sort of move around either speed up or delay starts hitting uh is really uh a uh it's a sort of thing to learn you kind of have to relearn how to cs again gotcha okay um, yeah and that actually answered a couple questions that people were having about the auto attacks uh so he's a he's a ranged auto attacker right mm -hmm. uh and uh yeah okay cool uh yep. another question yep. here regarding who luke has designed he actually also designed bard yep. so uh he's he's officially the uh the cosmic man yes the... Ma maybe the weird shit designer i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've actually the the same the same pod the same group of people uh did uh oh what was it i guess uh, the the like character artists and, and folks worked on Tom Kench most recently, so they were sort of the the monster pod, um, and I'm the I'm the weird celestial designer. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, to give you guys some context on that, uh, the way Champ Dev works is that we actually have some rotating pods, which are kind of self-contained teams uh, having all the constituent parts. So artists of the various kinds, gameplay designers like Luke, uh, and uh, and narrative dudes as well, who are rotating in between uh, uh, champions as they finish one. They'll be moving on to a next, which is coming down the pipe. Uh, so after this, Luke will be coming on to a, not the next champion, but uh, you know one down the line. Um, yeah, um, and we do the we do the like pod structure thing because we want the same group of people to be sort of together and learn how to be like a team, right? We want the same visual designers and artists and, and sound designers working together as much as possible to you know just make sure they get really good at making champions. Sure. Got Toge a together, I guess, in particular. Yeah. Got a couple right. questions about his laning phase. Uh, specifically, do the stars uh, kind of uh, inadvertently screw you over sometimes and keep you from being able to freeze the lane? Yeah. Uh, this guy definitely pushes uh, pushes the lane really hard. Okay. Uh, he he does it somewhat accidentally. You can you can kind of deal with it, but it can be tricky. Really, the idea is that um, his E is meant to be a, a big roaming tool, so that you. Uh, shove the lane using your passive and your W, and then you use your E, the, both the passive, which lets you run fast in a straight line, which, you know, from mid lane to bot lane is a straight line. Um, oh, I totally missed GG's. How, how rude. Um, uh, and then you use your, your E active when it comes up to sort of hop the wall and, and gank um, what, whichever lane is, is most vulnerable. Um, and the idea behind the, the E passive sort of falling off in combat is to give the enemy a chance to, if you know, if they, if they land a, a spell on you, they know that it's going to be X amount of time before you've managed to build up enough speed to take off. So they have at least a little bit of a warning when you go, when you go into a bush, they can sort of count to four or five and be like, okay, MIA, watch out, bot lane. Um, 